I don't even think I'm up to making cheeky little thrifting videos, you know. And as for other videos, I mean, I guess if you can't say something nice, don't say it at all. And I kind of have to maybe pay attention to that creed for a while, considering um, how negative my world view is at the moment. Um, and it's not that things in the world aren't holding my interest and that I don't have opinions on them, but I, it's just too difficult for me to muster that desire and that energy to sit down and have a chat and say anything that I feel is worthwhile, worth saying. I feel like it's a little bit pointless and everything and I guess that's partly, um, you know, just depression talking, you know, beyond anxiety and I guess those things go hand in hand. Um, but you know, with having such a negative worldview and with just so much going on at the moment that just has me deeply concerned about, you know, everybody's future. It makes me just think it's not really important that I talk about true crime or the general chit chats that I used to have. I don't know if it's just because the Human Animal Channel, you know, me as a viewer who makes videos, I, I'm not sure if this is just because it's simply run its course um, or because I'm just in the funk that I am. I mean, I was in a funk then too, right, when I started. Um, but I started making videos because, you know, well, there's only so many um, comments you can make in other people's um, comment sections, isn't there? I thought, well, you know, I should just have my say on my channel. After all, I could easily just give my view more completely, and there I've said it. And that's what I started doing. And I guess, I don't know if the muse has left or or what, or if it's because of what I see going on now. I mean, there was a girl where, you know, today, um, I can't remember the name of her channel. It's, um, she's something like Just a Housewife or something. She's an American woman and, you know, she wanted to talk about Chris McDonough. And um, ironically, in a video, live that she had titled Chris McDonough Wants to Silence Me, um, his little minions came running over and spam trolled her, right? To the point where rather than just saying her piece and ignoring the chat and letting their algorithm <laughs> boost her video, um, it did fluster her and upset her and I don't think she ended up doing a live at all. She opened a couple of lives and yeah, so, you know, and this is now what's going on, okay, and it's not a very good environment, and I'm not contributing to the positive side of it, am I? Um, you know, I'm not in the frame of mind to be able to do it, maybe, even though my channel, when it comes to true crime, despite the series that I've made on various crimes where I just have made a series of videos, five, six, seven videos on a specific crime such as the murder of John Benet Ramsey for example. Um, I am partly a response channel I guess and it just seems like everything's just out of control, isn't it? And and what usually happens, this is what usually happens, is all these things lump together and they just stomp on the little E's, you know? They just stomp them out, smash them out, and everything becomes homogenized. Yeah. So I hope I get the desire um, to make proper videos again where I sit in the naughty corner and um, give my view on something because I really like to do that but I 
<sighs> yeah so you know my presence here has been very disappointing I'm sure for a lot of people for quite a while now um, above and beyond you know the general disappointment um, that my channel was to people what I'm talking about is in the last I don't know how long has it been you know four five six weeks I don't know how long month maybe at least anyway um, but maybe we'll get back in the saddle I don't know maybe dressing a little bit like a steep shit station lady um, will help me do it even thrifting <laughs> doesn't really cheer me up but I thought look let's have a little cheeky thrift I selected a few things and I'm not going to show you all of them because I've already sort of looked at them and decided I'm not going to try on but speaking about trying on this is the numero uno tip for thrifting you've really got to try it on for example for example right now this could be fuddy-duddy it is a noni bee it's vintage the Look at this print. Look at those colours through there. There's just gentle mauves, salmons, this really interesting sort of um, olive yellow green. There's a little bit of burgundy. There's, there's a latte colour. And, you know, the flowers are poppies and... I love poppies. It's very, very romantic. It's kind of cottagey, but you know, it's from a label Noni B, which is sort of this, you know, um, oh, I can't explain it. It's not youthful fashion and it's not high fashion or anything like that. It's like um, good basic shopping mall fashion. But the thing is that the vintage series from labels like that just have lovely fabrics I think this is oversized it's a 12 um, but it's probably going to tuck in all right into some jeans because it's so soft it's so sheer and I'm interested in trying this on so I'm going to do that whereas I've decided against this one right now shirt shirt it's a stiffer fabric and everything but it's soft and it's kind of like one of those brushed cotton things but I feel like the contrast in here or something it's too bright too harsh too jarring it's going to be too stiff there's just too much of it for me on someone else this might be lovely but I decided against that one is just sort of a fast fashion brand as well it's called witchery this is a size 10 but I just like the subtle stripe I'm not sure if it's going to look like pajamas or not or is it going to look like resort or is it just going to look like nice spring casual to wear with a skirt and trainers or to wear with denim shorts I don't know until I try it on I'm not going to know if it's going to be cool or if it's just going to be too square and boxy but I do like a nice cuff detail don't I so we're going to try that these might be going to be too big but they're kind of in a Bermuda style jean which is nice because they come down just to above the knee um, just a really nice length it means that you can make your shorts dressy and the six dollars I think they're going to be half priced to three dollars they might be slightly big Catulas, I've never heard of that. They're a size S, which means that's about a 10 in Australia. Um, so about a 6 American. But it's just a nice blue wash. And I love denim that does not have stretch. I, I like that nice, firm denim. But having said that, I think these are going to look a bit puffy at the front. and They might be too big, but I'm going to try them on. And I'm looking for t-shirts so that I can just retire some that are 
bit too shabby where you know stitchings come undone and things and I love that heritage green that I um, thrifted the other day for two dollars I've been wearing that a lot and I decided I'd like to just stick with greens and blues now for my t-shirts I've usually been getting sort of these colors and then I just find they're a little bit blah and I don't really like wearing them so this one is a Zara, so it's fast fashion again, but it's alright, it's six dollars and again I think that's going to be half price at three. Super soft, super soft and the colour, blue, it's a kind of smoky blue, it's really pretty, so I'm going to try it. This is a Levi's cotton, but it's not a t-shirt cotton. So I don't know how it's going to go, and I don't know if the, I think, looking at it again now, I think this thin stripe blue and red, I think this is going to be overwhelming on me. Um, I just picked it up because it's, it's Levi's, I, I like these labels in here, and my eyes are going cross-eyed just looking at that pattern, so maybe I won't try that. And I was attracted to this one because it's Princess Highway, which is a little skater label kind of here, and they make really neat um, A-line skirts and things using really neat fabrics and, and um, yeah, neat florals and things like that um, in midi and A-line, uh, midi and mini A-line. But I don't know about the black with colour me anymore. I used to do that a lot. Um, but I just thought that was such a cute little spring top. I'm not so sure now because I think I should stick to my rule. I'm trying to really lighten up my wardrobe and be quite just a bit more fresh and easy breezy. Um, a bit more gentle. Um, it's amazing how much black um, clothing I've gotten rid of either sold or given away I'm keeping some classic there's some classics of course where you just need that long dress or the black pant but other than that I think black I really think bright black is too harsh um, in color seasons you need to be cool and bright and that might be someone it's not necessarily someone with white skin but it's with that pink undertone, not the peachy undertone. And they've possibly got, you know, very light skin, dark hair, blue eyes. Um, but people with all colour skin can be cool um, or warm. But I really think, yeah, black's for people with cool and bright. Even though this has yellow in, which is warm. Anyway, rambling. The last thing I might try on, and it's not the spring season, is it? Although, on a cool night walking around the city, I just, I just love things like this. It's drop sleeves, so it's good on my shoulders. See how this is just a drop, kind of, because um, I'm quite broad, and I don't want structure or shoulder pads or anything. Now that I look at this, I'm not sure if there's a little bit of pilling or if it's just dust, but it's a Zara. And I've got another little wool um, jumper that I've lived oh that I've lived in all winter. Um, so I like this colour, but Australians will be saying, look, state of origin, I've got Queensland on top and New South Wales on the bottom. That's our uh, one of our rugby codes. Interstate um, tournament that goes on every year <sighs> I'm gonna try it on because it's six dollars so I think that's gonna be three and it's nice and light yeah maybe I'll show you I'll just push pause 